Okay, let's uh, take a quick look at this. Appreciate for the referral, mate, as always. Congratulations on winning the drawing. Uh, sorry for the delay. I've just been super, super busy with Dallas Prep. I'll take a look. If you have any questions about what we talked about, obviously let me know. It looks like this is going to be Moira all the way through. I kind of skimmed through it. It looks like Moira all the way through. And so main thing here, I, I think like the first thing I, I look at with Moira is you really have such a dichotomy of choices. Uh, I guess it's ironically myopic because it's, it, <laughs> I guess it's to describe it myopic as inaccurate. It's really just two things that you can do. And that's what kind of makes it more unique is that there's really just the two things. Do you need burst healing? Okay. Uh, and then if not, then the answer is flank. Um, and uh, sometimes you'll take the flank even if you need the burst healing. It depends on where you need the burst healing, crucially. But I think for the most part, uh, you kind of need to answer that question first. And I think that also you have to kind of look at your tank and decide, can I actually burst heal that tank? For example, I'm looking at your situation now with your tank. And I really think that playing on like the core, playing on main, like playing passively, is going to be totally useless. Not only because the enemy comp... Uh, I mean, this Reaper Tracer kind of a thing that you can duel, but there's nothing really that you can heal. Like, your monkey's not going to be jumping or wanting to jump back to you. He's going to be playing a little more proactively. So you need to be, like, capitalizing off of his aggression. And, and oftentimes, the way to burst him is to go with him. But the way to go with him is to not just run it down main, because that's going to get you killed a lot of the time. I think that you have to be really sneaky and surreptitious in the way that you approach things, taking off angles, maybe assisting your cast or your echo and the angles that they take. And really, you and Kiriko are going to be playing split a lot of the time. One of you helping one lane, the other you helping the other lane, whatever that may be. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. And now what that's going to do is going to allow you to provide burst healing um, when and where it's needed, but then also you're going to be able to do DPS when and where it's needed at the same time. So oftentimes you can kind of do the same thing with Moira, and that's always the challenge, right? Now, one of the things I want to talk about here, and this is like this is where like I think a lot of Moira's skill comes from, is making the choice of ult charge versus dueling. Now, that decision is really made for your orbs. So for example, right now, you should have already thrown a damage orb right now. Already thrown a damage orb because you're not likely to take any action in the next five, six seconds. Throw a damage orb at tank, throw a damage orb up here, whatever, feed some, get some ult charge. I think especially since the heal passive, it's even more important that you're just throwing orbs whenever you get the opportunity to do damage for ult charge because sometimes some of that ult charge is not going to be fed to the enemy supports. It's actually just going to be fed to the air because it's going to be automatically regenerated. Uh, and so it's just literally free ult charge. Now, that's the, the ult charge strategy. The dueling strategy is, is there at any point in the next, what is it, eight second cooldown, right? Let me actually check here. Um, I'm going to skip ahead in your VOD here and just to make sure. Yeah, 8 second cooldown. So, any in the next 8 seconds, am I going to be taking a serious action on anybody? Whether that's with my tank, or whether that's by myself, whether that's for backline, whether that's on their tank line, whatever the case may be. Because really, damage orb or heal orb is a huge spike in value. Even your ability to live in action, or the ability to kill somebody else. So... Well, you might look at like right now, you might actually be hesitant to throw a damage orb now because even though you have a pretty good sight line out of where it's going to go, the problem is, is that we're looking in the next four or five seconds. Maybe you're going to go like look to duel this tracer here. Maybe you're going to look to follow your monkey to point and throw and harass this way. Or maybe you need to sustain your monkey. So you kind of want to have like right about right as the action's starting, you want orb available. So a lot of times what the cycle is for Moira is like pre-fight damage orb for ult charge. And then right as the fight's starting, save the orb and look to how you want to use it. And then use it the second you see an opportunity whether that's to harass a squishy or just to sustain yourself and what you need to do here is you need to decide which type of action you want to take which lane do you want to control you could go with your monkey here Moira's really good at this and sustain on point i actually like what your monkey's doing right now and you could easily sustain your monkey on the flank and then harass and again this is something that is unique to moira because moira can sustain a monkey on an angle um and, and and not be in any danger herself like really only kiriko could do what you're doing uh, like follow the monkey here right the other thing that makes Moira unique is then you can see what action your tank is doing and take an opposite reaction the other side of the map so you could literally go here and start 1v1ing the tracer to prevent the follow-up here what you don't want to do is just stay in main because the problem with main is not that it's always bad because main you know hurt or we just like angles because angles we like that word the reason why angles matter is because you have fade you have fade so if you were playing zenyatta would you want to stand here and just throw crap at the wall no you'd want to get up here and start doing actual damage but the problem with that is you die to do that but that doesn't apply to moira so if you're able to take like a more proactive angle here and actually harass this way you're doing things that any dps or any support would love to do they just can't but you can't because you have that fade, because you have that healing orb. Um, 
And so I think that, that that's the crucial thing here. It's, it's, it's the access to those squishies from a different site lane. Like, I mean, look at your Cassidy, right? Like, your Cassidy can't do that. I mean, he probably should be trying to look for a way to do it safely, but it, it's a lot harder for your Cassidy is for you. So you're kind of going back here and supporting, right? But that's, that's pointless, right? It's pointless. It's not what your character is strong at. Your character is strong at taking these proactive positions and setting an area of effect where you're useful. A little bit similar to Lucio. You're not really good at being here and then helping people over here. If you're here, you need to do things here. You need to take that aggressive angle, whether it's with your tank or whether it's by yourself or whether it's with the DPS, whatever, and do something from that position. And right now, we've gone a long time and you've put out zero pressure. You've literally been completely irrelevant. Um, and that's the worst thing, right? It's like your monkey's actually taking action here. And now is like the first time you've actually done anything with it. Um, and I'll say as well, like this is why you need to be super disciplined with actually putting pressure out as much as you constantly can. Because if there, if there goes any period of time when you don't do damage or you don't put pressure, you're not taking a duel, it makes it really hard to decide if you should heal over damage orb, right? So because that downtime and that damage there meant that as soon as you threw that damage orb, you got pressured and now you don't have resources. Like to be honest, you should die for this. Yeah, this is just, it's just, it's an inactivity followed by mismanagement of resources because you weren't actually doing anything proactive. Like so much of Moira is actively doing something proactive and making that read quickly. Okay, so <clears throat> your Winston's in deep. Again, we're playing so passively here, right? And the, the thing is, is that other supports can't be as proactive as Moira. So what they're rewarded with is if they can't be as proactive as Moira, then they get more poke value. Like if you're playing this passively as Zen or Ana, there's at least you can land a nade or a couple of shots. Moira doesn't have that luxury. She doesn't have good tank damage. She doesn't have good tank pressure. Uh, and so it doesn't actually work out so well. And I want to point out, okay, so based off of our cycle of orbs, right? Are you likely to take action in the next few seconds? The answer is yes. So then this damage orb is a mistake. Because I want you to look at what this damage orb does, okay? It's on an angle. It gets a little bit of tickle there. It's a nice little bounce. It does stand. It does okay damage, right? It's not bad, right? But the problem is, is then you immediately take action after it, right? You fade in, which is not even bad. Sometimes you're going to have to fade to an angle. You've got cover here. It's great. But imagine a damage orb now. Or imagine that Baptiste or Lucio pushes you now and you need to heal over yourself, right? This is a good angle. This is the first time you've actually done anything proactive. Um, that's okay. That was a good attempt there on the, on the echo. And unfortunately, you, there was a window of opportunity where you actually did not put out as much pressure as you would like to. This is good. This is good. I wouldn't leave the angle here. You can't really help them. Again, it's just a question of timing, right? When you took the angle, you were already down one, one and a half. So at that point, the timing didn't matter. I appreciate what you did. I just don't like when you did it or even really how you did it. Like we said with the damage orb, this is a pre-fight orb, pre-fight orb. Your echo is kind of feeding. This is a pretty bad stagger here. Okay, so um, you could probably throw another orb here as well. Throw out a damage orb, build ult charge because I think you're probably about seven or eight seconds away from action because your echo's in spawn. Yeah, it's lazy. And I would also be prioritizing, even in your poke orbs, don't just prioritizing on tank, because remember, tank doesn't feed as much ult charge, and also it's just, like, your damage orb in a poke situation might even force a cooldown or two, right? Like, there's a chance, right? So th throw it at a squishy. Throw it at a squishy. Um, okay. But yeah, you can kind of see, again, like, the damage orb was kind of late, and then your Winston takes action, and you didn't have anything for that action. Save your orb. I, I really don't like that damage orb. Really don't like that damage orb. Damage orb. You got to read the situation. And be like, is this damage actually relevant? Do I need to survive bloody? I see beat. Oh my goodness. I need to heal over myself, right? I need to heal over me and my Kiriko. That way I don't have to fade. Um, and then I actually have fade if they keep pushing, right? Uh, honestly, I mean, I guess it's all right. But I think Roadhog versus Moira is one of the worst matchups in the entire game. You actually do almost no damage to him at all. That's good. That's good. Probably would have heal orb that just because it is a 2v1. Remember, fading in means that you are at a disadvantage. So what you do is you fade, you heal orb yourself, and then you can take the 2v1 because your healing per second is like, oh gosh, it might be like 90 or something like that. I mean, minus the DPS passive. Somebody in the comments might have to correct me, but it's actually insane like what the uh, what the healing per second is. Um, but yeah. All right, so key thing there is it's taking you too long to take action, and then your orbs aren't really fitting the cycle. I'll demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about after this, uh, after this review here. This is also where you could be throwing. Uh, actually, no, never mind. You have coal here, so there's no point throwing uh, the cycle damage, the, the farm damage orbs. You can just um, do whatever. I, I think this is fine. Uh, you, you know, Moira and Card is like not great because you kind of want to take an angle, but somebody has to push Card. And I look at your comp, and I don't think anybody really wants to be on Card, so it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't just blindly throw damage rope, especially if it was at the Roadhog. I'd look for a, at least if you're going to throw a damage rope here, like make it force a cooldown by getting it on a squishy. 
Okay, so they've kind of pushed up here, so we need some kind of proactive action here. That's a good damage orb. Even if it just does like 50, 60 damage, that's gonna that's gonna contribute, right? A damage orb, I think one of the myths that you damage orb should be like fully sucked dry, you know? I think like stuff like this, right? I don't know if I agree with the damage orb choice, but I think it's okay. Um, but like that, that like even if it's just 30 or 40 damage, like that, if it had been placed better, I think the placement of the orb was the problem there. But if that's placed better, that's going to help force his fade and allow you to actually take the duel. That damage orb is really good. Let's take a look at like what this does. Okay. Okay. If he stays, that's like 80, 90 damage. And then all of a sudden you've canceled his shield regeneration. And then you can get up here and take the duel. And he's already missing like almost half his HP bar. Right. I like this. This is good. This is really good. But again, this is what makes more unique. Oh, you, you unfortunately messed up the combo there. I mean, you, you knew what you know. You know how to do it. You just messed it up. Um... Unfortunately, kind of a blind fade here. Like, I would take the Tracer duel over a blind fade. Like, a Tracer can't kill you uh, in Cole. Like, it just doesn't happen unless she has Pulse, and then even then you can just fade it, right? So, uh, like, Roadhog, again, I want I cannot emphasize enough, like, how bad the tank matchup is for Moira. Like, really, any tank is, like, awful for Moira, uh, but especially Roadhog. So, like, I really, really encourage you to avoid... Uh, DPSing tank, like your tank, that's part of the reason why Moira is more of a flanker, because if there's any sort of like a brawl tank, like you're, you're actually like, you do so little, you're the worst hero in the game. Literally mercy pistol, more relevant uh, than your than your stuff versus a tank. So take the angles, pressure, uh, find something else. Like again, like right now you need to be either, I honestly would not even be babysitting my, my Cassidy here. I'd be looking, looking to take an aggressive position up here with my Kiriko, my Tracer, maybe set up an angle on the back line here. Because like there's, there's the, what are you going to do, play Patty Cake with Roadhog? There you go. There you go. See, that damage mattered. It was only a little bit, but that was just enough to get the break point with a body shot there, right? Uh, we need to get away from here. We're not going to kill this guy. We're not going to kill this guy. This is this is just you dopamine fishing. This is you dopamine fishing. This is It feels good because I'm getting tickies, but my relevance in the battlefield is pointless. Like, if you're pushing card here, fine. But as soon as Roadhog comes here, there's only risk. There's no reward for that. There's only risk. Only bad things can happen from that. This is okay if you can live it. I just too slow to live it. You should. You needed to stop playing to kill that. Just play to live because your team is on the back line. So you just need to keep them busy and live, and then your team will come regroup, and then you'll win. Old charge damage orb. It's fine. I thought for sure that would get some ticks. It ended up not, but that's all right. It seemed like it would. Again, we need to find a way to get around this roadhog. Stop playing patty cake with it. Take the top left, right. Take the top left. Like, use your fade. Like, let's go. Like, take it, get, get aggressive with this. Take an angle. Get a wrap around. The, like, you know the Roadhog's there. So, like, it's just a free lane. Uh, and then at this point, this fight's just lost. Okay, so a lot of your problems, I think, would uh, improve if you were a little bit more um, proactive on, on, on aggressive angles, aggressive mobility, and then paying attention, like I said, specifically to that orb cycle, right? Damage orb for old charge. If a fight's about to start, then I need you to prioritize saving the the orb whether it's heal or damage to either win a duel or sustain somebody on an angle because you're about to take serious action and then obviously things like damage orbing swishies and, and stop playing patty cake with a tank although i think that that's kind of a a symptom of your, your your positioning like right now like you can you can sit here this is fine like you can do this you can throw the damage orb sure it's good good value i mean look 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 look, look at your damage orb right so throw the damage orb let's watch this so this fight's starting damage orb matters only get, don't really get much there, but you get a little tickle on the trace, like 15, 20 damage. Okay. Then the Zen. One, two, three, four. I mean, that is a lot of damage on that Zen. A lot of damage on that Zen. That was like 80, 90 damage on that Zen Yada. So that's a big chunk of damage right there. Um, that was well done. That's kind of like what we're looking for, right? Like the, the real skill of Moira is obviously choosing which orb to use in those situations, but you don't even really get to the point where you have to make that decision. Oh, you're just moving in a straight line. Um, until you've learned to time things well. Right, until you've learned to like actually sync your orb cycle. Because once you get that orb cycle right, then we can start thinking about which orb to use. People are always asking me like, what's better orb to use? It's like, it's a flawed question. It's, it's, it's you don't even a ask that question until you're actually like, like right now, what's better to use? Do you use a damage orb here on the Zenyatta? Do you damage orb in the Reaper? Do you save damage orb or heal orb just in case you needed to duel the Reaper? I think that th this is a tricky situation. I think any of these are, uh, could go. I think for me, I think the damage orb in the Zenyatta is probably the safest thing because he's the like the least mobile character uh, and it's going to actually matter. But like that, that was okay. Like you kind of took an angle there. I think maybe the fade was a little too early. Uh, you can make him look at you first and then just fade immediately afterwards. And then again here, like, oh, that's such an unfortunate balance. That bounce, that needed to hit that squishies or those squishies. 
Angling here is fine. I, I, I like. I understand like it's a difficult spot for you. Um, I would find an angle on uh, DPS here around. Like this is where like if you feel like you don't know what to do, instead of just like playing just scared. Okay, there's no good angle here, right? Because it's like here getting cleared out. There's no good can't retake. This is where things like getting here and fade jumping top with a damage orb and then like ducking through this room here, like playing patty kick in the back line. That's where that's useful. Because don't forget you have the verticality there, right? It's, is it high risk? Yes. But you're not, you're literally the worst support in the game at doing what you're doing right now, which is sitting in the back line and trying to keep squishies alive. There is not a, there is literally not a character in the game that's worse at doing what you're doing right now. The map is making things harder for you because it's a wide open spot. Moira struggles versus that. But when there's a wide open spot, that's when you have to take an angle. That's when you have to flank. Um, it literally would have been better here instead of sitting here for you to fade this direction. Hard flank, five, four, three, two, one. You show up late, but at least you're here with an orb. There's a better chance of winning this fight. And then your choice of target is the Roadhog. And so now you're just like, this is dead. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't even have to know. Like, this is over. I don't even have to look. Keep going here. Again, the priority needs to be in, like, honestly here, like, I appreciate you helping your tank and going in aggressive here, but as soon as I see Roadhog, my, my eyes roll to the back of my head, and I just get, I guess it's not exactly the best description of what I do, but I'm a lot less interested in what you have to do, just because it's such a bad matchup for you. I think target priority, uh, in, in general, is overrated, uh, but there are a couple of characters, I think Winston and Moira... A lot of the beam characters, lower damage characters, really do have to choose their angles correctly. Like, even now, it's like, man, what are you doing? Like, you, you gotta get on that Reaper, or you gotta get on that Zen on Ana. You gotta actually take some space. Like, you can go top left here, right? Throw a damage orb, fade up in here, use the cover. I would even commit Coalescence right now, just to hold some space. Because, again, you're operating in a way that's not really forcing your mobility. You need to be playing in a way that forces your mobility. No orb into cold air, that's unfortunate. I do appreciate that you're on the position though. Fade away from the hog, get an angle, that's good. Um, yeah, that was, that was good. Heal orb just in case, now take an angle, take an angle. Okay, get him off, there you go, that's fine. And then now it's like, we need to get top right. We need to get away from that road hog. We can't sit here forever. This is not useful, like, yeah, 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 there you go, there you go, there you go. Now like, where's the Kiriko or Ana or Zen or Tracer or whatever? Yes, this is good, this is good. This is what makes us unique. There it is, right there, bam. Stop, 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 stop. Don't second guess yourself. Like, she can sustain herself long enough. You know what's going to kill your Junker Queen? The Discord, the Zenyatta, and the Ana. You need to take the pressure off of the Junker. She can win that 1v1 here. You instead needed to damage orb that Zenyatta, and he's dead. I promise you. You can't possibly sustain. Now, if you were, like, BAP, maybe you could keep your Queen up. You know, because you could actually put out pressure on the Roadhog. But you see how, like, actually useless you feel here. So, let's actually, let's get into game here. And I'm going to try, try and demonstrate a couple of these... Um, these historically always go miserably, but let's just, let's just for the sake of things, let's try and demonstrate this as best as I can. Uh, okay. So, you know, main takeaway is understanding your orb cycle. When am I about to take action? Okay. I save my orb for that action, not necessarily saving it for heal orb. It's my, well, 70% of the time, probably be damage orb, right? But then it's the heal orb if I need it for the dual damage orb, whatever. But then if it pre-fight, pre-fight, then it's going to be all about, having the situation uh where you just basically spam damage orbs for ult charge essentially at that point uh, and then in the meantime just playing more proactively taking more and this this map is going to be tough right this map is doesn't have a lot of spots so this one is, is like pottery iso first point going to be a little bit more open space moira likes stuff where i'm able to close the distance more flank options uh and and verticality is generally not great you do have verticality options but it's not something that you go out of your way to look for. Okay, so let's see, let's see how it goes. So I'm looking at my comp already. Roadhog does not need my help really whatsoever. So that burst heal value that I can get. Uh, what do we got here? I don't like Demon Queen. Let's do the classic. Um, let me turn this down just a little bit. So I, I might, that burst heal value that Moria provides, not relevant with my comp. What I can do though, is I can like my Ana anchors on main and heals my tank slash damages nades the enemy team. I could be a budget Kiriko on those flanks. And the difference between Kiriko and Moira is Kiriko provides better burst healing, better Suzu, uh, and better ways to disengage. Uh, whereas Moira can sustain longer. She just basically holds the angle for a long, long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and predict that we're moving on the left here with my Genji and Tracer. Let's see if they come with me. And I'm gonna be ready to help them. I'm gonna save my orb here because I don't know if we're about to take action. And again, notice I'm saving my orb here. Why? Because I know we're about to take action. 
I can't help my Ana. She's too far away. That might have been a little too early for damage orb there. You see, because I damage orb that. And I didn't really get full value. So I didn't get full value out of that damage orb because I was just like, oh, it's a squishy, right? And you notice immediately afterwards, I needed the healer. We needed it immediately. So that's the danger, right? You could use your orb more often to get it uh, off a of cooldown, basically. Like, you could use it more often. But at what cost? So again, I can't really do much versus the ball. So if he's there, I'll help him. Up my Genji. Now I'm looking for this. Aww. Bad cover usage. So you know that's the that's the problem. If you're doing what I'm doing, you know there's a lot more of a risk of you getting punished because I'm taking action, right? Like taking action is inherently risky. I really don't want to use my... Actually, I need to fade here. I'm scared of that venture. So, too early, too much space too early. In that situation there, I needed to take a, a more angle, a better angle on the left side, I think, across the bridge. This venture, this venture uh, in EVR is ruining me. So I might even damage up this Tracer, even though it's only going to do a little bit, because... Oh, that's unfortunate. Nice little bounce there. Oh, nice little bounce there. I don't think I can fade top. That was a bad orb. Aw, oh, crud. That's okay. Like, you can see how fragile you are to tanks. Like, they just, they just totally disregard everything that you do. If I had saved orb there, uh, instead of orbing then fading, if I had faded on the tracer then orbed, I would have killed her, and then I would have been in a much better position to actually live that. Remember, the worst crime is doing nothing. The worst crime is not dying. Now, he might drop on me. <laughs> Worth. <laughs> you notice how quickly they f they punish that use of fade. That's good. I might. Yeah, I'm gonna wait and TP here. I think I'm gonna wait and TP here. This is why damaged Moira works. Wait, hello? You can't, you can't, you can't change? Okay, so you can't change. I didn't know that. Um, this is why damage only, um, Moira works. is because I mean, even if it's not optimal that you're not able to heal anybody at all because of permaflanking, you're able to sustain on these angles for so long. I, I think we lost this fight, especially with me being so late. Torb is another actually tricky one, actually. Really, really hard to kill. I gotta be careful here because Ball and Tracer might 2v1 me. So, not an optimal 1v1 for me, but I know if I play my resources, I'll never die as opposed to a Roadhog. Yo, come back. Come on. Really don't want to use my fade here. Yeah, 
you can see, like, at this point, all I'm doing is I'm just playing to live. The difference, again, is if I play well versus the, the ball, I don't die. It's not an optimal target, but he's on the angle, so I'm going to take it. Saving my orb here. You notice this? I know I might meet it. So, so that one, I'm trying to decide what I should do. They're doing a good job marking me on the angle there, and my DPS aren't coming with me. I might have stayed on the left side though. I felt like I lost too much vision. I didn't have enough, didn't have enough vision on that one side. Whatever. We had ults, they didn't have ults, as opposed to the last fight. I'm throwing my damage orb out early now, because we got a little bit of time before action happens. I might have pulled some here. Here. Probably didn't need to heal up that one. I think I was okay. I can't help my doom, so I'm just not gonna even try. Now he's not anti, so I'm trying to body block a little here. And you can see the value there, right? And if even if my venture's not with me, it's still useful. I can still do work. Okay, I need to help. Man, that's EVR is tough. Can help my Sombra win that 1v1. There we go. Like you can see, no damage at all. Basically no damage at all, but the damage that I got mattered. Really important. I puppy guard my. The question is, just, am I gonna need my? Kind of an early orb there, but I thought that we'd take action. And you notice I'm just heal orbing myself because, like, I re it's really important I stay on this angle. Kind of unnecessary nano, but I respect it. Okay, I can't get lazy, can't just sit in card here, gotta take an angle, because they're gonna dump some bolts on card here. Uh, I'm gonna actually fade in here. I'm gonna follow my healer because I don't have fade, so I gotta be careful. Ooh, again, you notice that I'm fading to follow, fading to follow. So I knew I was dead there. Um, like, if I do have to fade in, I try to fight, follow my healer. Oh my goodness, that was a crazy need. The enemy has the robot. Okay. 30 seconds remaining. So I'm Brig now. So this is basically an unkillable backline for me, but that just means my value comes through distraction, right? But can I fade top? I think I can. I just think I'm bad. I need to be really careful here. A little risky to throw that heal up there. I, I might have been too late. I might have to just let her die. Fight's about to start, so this this damage orb is good. Switching to the tracer, even though the ball is hacked, because again, the damage is so much more relevant. I thought that was gonna hit the brig. Whoops. Oh, that was bad. Ooh, bless me. Brig, brig is low, brig is low.
AC9. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I hope you kind of get like an idea. I poorly performed in terms of like the way I'm positioning and so on, but like the value that you get out of this character and like even the more die. Okay, let's think about it this way: the more divey they go, the harder it is for me to kill them by myself. But the more value I can get out of just harassing, distracting, um, and the more squishy they go, the harder it is to get close to them. But when I do get close to them, man, those damage orbs do so much. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoy this, and I'll chat with you later.